Hello, this is the lecture series on LACT India and in this lecture we will look at how to solve an analytical reasoning set. I am Jijo and I am the creator of LSAT India 480 course, a course designed to help you ace the LSAT India test. When we look at analytical reasoning set or what we'll call as logical game questions, what is important is to have a process, a process to solve them and the process is what I'm going to call the God's process. There are four things which are important. Number one, we need to gather the information that is given. Number two, we have to organize information and the most crucial step is to deduce from the information and number four is to solve the question. Let's see this process in action. I'm going to use the free prep test one, section number one, game number three, questions 11 to 17. This is the setup. Every analytical reasoning question starts with the setup where the basic information is given. It has got two parts. One, we have the information and number two is we have got the rules. From the information I need to understand what is a game that we are playing. Is it a sequencing game? Is it a grouping game? Is it, is it a combination of sequencing and grouping? Is it a selection game? So we need to understand what is a game that we are playing. Number two we have to understand the game pieces. When I say what a game pieces are, are those elements that is critical for this particular game and we are looking at a game board or a diagram that we're going to use to fill in the information given here. Those are the first three things that we need to figure out. Once that happens, the second thing is to gather information from here. In terms of number one is to codify the rule. We have to ensure that all the rule that is given here is converted into some sort of a code on the piece of paper. Number two, we have to make as much deduction as possible in the initial stage itself. And this is going to be a crucial step. One, we can make immediate deductions based on each of these rules and we can combine rules and make overall deduction towards the end. Before we start looking at the question, we need to ensure that we have done some deduction. So in the first stage, we have gathered information, we have organized information, we have done some amount of deduction and some of the questions will require further deduction when we solve the questions. Let's look at the information and do this process. Let's read what is going on here. A cruise line is scheduling seven week long voyages for the ship Azad. Each voyage will occur in exactly one of the first seven weeks of the season, weeks one through uh, seven. So what we're given here, we understand the game here. This game is a sequencing game or an ordering game. Each voyage will be exactly one out of the four destinations. So we have the pieces here, ladies and gentlemen, the game pieces are these four destinations. Guadalupe, Jamaica, Martinique or Trinidad. Each destination will be scheduled for at least one of the four, one of the weeks. So this information gives us that this game pieces G, J, M and T has to happen at least one. So from here, let's gather the information. The information number one is the game pieces. We have got G, we have got J, we have got M, and we have got T and the board here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So this is the game board wherein we are going to put the pieces in. One of the things that we know for sure is that we have to see this at least once. So we have to see at least one G, at least one J, at least one M, at least one T. In this case we also understand that there are these spots for these four pieces. Therefore there will be repetition of those game pieces. The next step is to look at the rules and see how we can codify this rule. There are certain rules which will allow us to put some pieces onto the board. Certain rules we cannot put the piece onto the board. Let's start with the first one. J will not be in destination in week number four. This is an anti-rule. When I say an anti-rule, something is not allowed. So J will not be in destination number four. It is not a strong, so we'll just mention below it. We will not write, uh, on top of it, we will mention something that we are absolutely sure. Whatever is not sure, we will mention just before it. This is not a powerful rule, which all that it says is that J cannot be in this particular position. That opens the possibility of J being anywhere here. Unless, of course, there are other rules which gives us additional information. This is some a weak rule in the sense that we have, there are still many places open for that piece J. 
what we know j cannot be in position number 4 let's look at the second rule t will be in destination in week 7 this is a very strong rule we have had one piece fixed which is t is in position number 7 number 3 azad will make exactly two voyages to martinique and at least one voyage to guadeloupe will occur in some week between those two voyages there are two information that is given here one is that there'll be exactly two voyages to m so m the number of m's that we'll have is two so we have got two m's in in, in 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 two pieces of m that need to be fitted here the second information is between these two m's there has to be at least one g so we just capture the information in in this manner so if there is one m and another m between them we need to have at least one g g will be the destination in the week preceding any voyage that makes it to Jamaica. It's, a, it's very important to understand what this rule is actually telling us. One of the challenges that happens in analytical decision set is wrong interpretation of the rule. What this rule says is that whenever there is a J, there must be a G just before the J. J will be the destination in the week preceding any voyage it makes to J. If there is a J and the J, there must be a G just before the J. Mind you, we can have a voyage to G without having a J. But if there is a J, it must have a G just before that. From this, we can make some more inferences. Since there has to be something just before a J, J cannot be in position number one as well. If J is in position number one, then there is no place for G. No destination will be scheduled for consecutive weeks. So that is something that is true for every single game piece so we'll just call it x which represents any game piece and say that we cannot have a block wherein we have got two x's together that also tells us that position number six cannot be t but because uh, seven is already t the six cannot be t this small sort of inference that we can put in here saves a lot of time in the future now we have captured all the information is there any more deduction that we can make we can make the deduction based on what could be the pieces that we're looking at here. Now, let's do the deduction. One is, there must be a J. If there's a J, there must be a G before that J. So one block that we have to find is that somewhere we must see at least one GJ block. So that is one block that is there. We also know that there must be two M. We also know there must be a two, there one T. Anyway, that T is already here. So that has got one, two, three, four, five pieces. And we're looking at two more pieces here. Right. We're looking at two more pieces. And these two more pieces could be anything. It could be two T. It cannot be an M because the only two M that is possible. So we just mentioned that these pieces cannot be M as well. So we can have both to be G. There is no violation to this particular rule. Please understand that rule says if there is a J, there is a G just before the J. The G can be alone. There's no problem. But if there is a J, there must be a G. So one of the things that we can also look at, if there is a J, we can have just one more block of GJ, which means the maximum number of J that is possible is only two. We have no position for the third J. These are some of the inference that we can think of, but at this point in time, we'll just leave it here. So what we have done now is we have gathered all the information. We have organized them. We have made as many deductions as possible based on the initial set of information that is given to us. Now, let's hit the questions. The first question says, which one of the following is an acceptable schedule of the destination of Asad in the order from week 1 to week 7? Based on whatever is the rule that we found, uh, that we have mentioned here, all the rules that, that's here, what is the acceptable order? This kind of question is what I'm going to call a list question. To answer the list question, we don't have to look at each answer choices and see whether it works. Is better thing is to whether or not it is consistent with the rules that is given. We have got some rules. For instance, we have got this rule with respect to J. One, the rule that is given is that J cannot be in position number four. We also know that J cannot be in position number one. So that will allow us to eliminate a couple of answer choices. In this case, we can see J in position number four, one, two, three, four. We can say J in position number one. So that eliminates option number C and option number D. We also the need to have a rule that T has to be in position number seven. So all, all these answer choice has T as position number seven, which is not a problem. We, the next rule is that between two M's, we need to have at least one G. Between two M, at least one G. 
So let's check if that is violated anywhere. So we have C, we have got an M, we have got an M, but this is not a G. So there are this is the direct violation of that particular rule. Therefore, that eliminates answer choice number B, which means our answer to this question is answer choice number A. Done. Let's look at question number 12. This question number 12, let's just read the question. It says, which one of the following cannot be true about ASA's schedule of voyages? Now, this question is not giving any additional piece of information. It's asking us, based on the inference that we draw, can we answer the question? Which of the following must be false, cannot be true? One of the inference that we drew is that number six cannot be T because that violates the rule that two things, the two destination cannot be consecutive. We, have, we can see that in answer choice number A, which says that Asad makes a voyage to Trinidad in week number six, which is a violation. Since we are looking at cannot be true, that would be answer to this question. These kind of questions, which asked us based on the original piece of inform, uh, information, with no additional information is what I'm going to call a global question. The reason why I'm using the word global is just to identify that question type wherein we have to draw the inference based on whatever is the original set of deduction that we made without any additional piece of information. But the Dara question which gives us additional piece of information which I'm going to call as a local question. Look at this question. If Azad makes a voyage to Trinidad in week 5, which one of the following could be true? Now, this question starts with an additional information. If Asad makes a voice to Trinidad in week 5, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm going to call as a main game board or main diagram. We don't want to write in the main diagram because every question requires us to do additional work with that diagram. So, in the exam, what you need to do is create a working diagram for the specific question. So, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just capture all the information that is on, that is here, all the must be true information. We'll leave all the rules there. We'll work with the rules as we go along. If Asad makes a voice to Trinidad in week number five. Okay, now let's look at what is a rule that we can work with. One of the rules that we can work with is this block. A block is a very powerful rule. So let's look at GJ as a block. GJ must be there, GJ being there, and GJ being here. The other possibility, of course, is that GJ being there as well. There are three possibilities for this GJ. Number one, what we understand is that the fourth position cannot be J. So GJ as a block cannot be in three and four. There are two possibilities, GJ being here, two and three, GJ being here, one and two. Let's quickly think about those two possibilities. One, G and J being here, Another possibility is a G and J being there. Once we got those two possibilities, what we need to now look at is this particular rule. We must have an MGM. In this particular case, the only way to get that done is, is to have an M here. If you have an M here and get a G there. Mind you, only having a G is not a violation of this particular rule. And here, so we have got this one position, two position and three position. Now, we can have a lot of cases wherein we can have an M here and uh, a, a M here which 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 will satisfy that condition. We can also have a, a case where M is there as well. We cannot put the two M's here because then it becomes a violation of that rule because we have in, in the T. So what we know for sure M has to be in position number one and M could be there for in position number four or position number five. For instance, if M is position number, uh, sorry, position number six, if M is in position number six, we can have another G to fill that particular position, which is number four. There'll be no violation to the rule. So we'll leave these two inferences and just check the answer choices. The question says which of the following could be true. So we eliminate all the answer choices, which it's false. Number one says, Asad makes a voice to Trinidad in week number one, which is incorrect. It has to be either a G or an M. There is no third possibility. So that can be eliminated. Asad makes a voice to M in week number two. It is, we cannot have M in week number two that is that is out. Asad makes a voice to G in week number three. In week number three, we don't have a G. Therefore, that gets eliminated. And therefore, answer choice to this question is four. Asad makes a voice to M in week number four. While this is not possible in case number one, it is definitely possible in case number two. We can have this M here and probably could have a G there. Therefore, answer to that question is D. In a local question, 
what you will have to do is that we have to make additional deduction. There is another way to solve this question as well. Instead of making the deduction here, we can work with each of these answer choices and check whether that is false. It is just that it takes a little more time. If your answer choice is answer choice number D, we'll have to work with every single case before we can get to the answer. So the better way to do is to make the deduction here. The number of cases would be very limited. So once you understand those cases, then we can easily solve the question. Let's look at question number 14. Question number 14 is another local question. This question has an additional information that is given. If Asad makes a voice to G in week 1 and a voice to J in week 5, and which of the following must be true? So, the first thing is that let's create the working board. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. We know there's a T there. Let's add in the information from the question itself. If Asad makes a voice in G in week number four, 1 and J in week number 5. Now let's make the deduction. Let's look at which is the rule. If there is a J, there must be a G just before the J, which means this is forced. Right. Now, the next thing we have to look at is what about this particular case? We know that we need to add two M's and one of the G must be between those two M. One thing is absolutely certain, we cannot put the two M's here because that will violate that particular condition, also that particular rule. The only way to get that happen is one of the M gets into this position number two or three, another M necessarily needs to get into position number six. So that's uh, that's the only way it can happen. And there could be a lot of possibilities here. We'll just leave that for instance, uh, we could have an M here and a T there. There's no problem, no violation of any rule. We could even have a case where the T here and M here, there's no violation of the rule. We can even have a case where you've got a J here, which says GJ as a, as a condition that is satisfied, and we can have an M there as well. There's no violation of the rule, violation of any those rules. So ladies and gentlemen, since there are a lot of possibility here, we'll just leave it at, as it is. Anyway, the question asks us to figure out something that must be true. What must be true is G is in position number one, G is in position number four, and M is in position number six. Those are the things that are must be true. Let's look at the answer choices. Asad makes a voice to J in week number two. J in week number two is something that is could be true. We are looking at uh, we are looking at an answer which is must be true. Therefore, it can be eliminated. Asad makes a voice to M in week number six, which is something that is must be true. That's our answer, ladies and gentlemen. We can check the others as well. Asad makes a voice to M in week number three, and M in week number three is something that is could be true. But the question is asking us to figure out something that is must be true. Therefore, that's wrong. Asad makes a voice to G in week number six, which obviously would be false. Week number six has to be M. Answer to this question is B. Let's look at question number 15. Question number 15 is another local question. We'll follow the same logic. This says, if Asad makes a voice to G in week number one and to T in week number two, then which of the following must be true? Now the must be true question, let's create a working board. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. What we know is that number seven is T. Let's put in other information in the question. Week number one is G and week number the, the two is T. Now all these are open. Now we need to ensure that the GJ as a block that must be there. One of the block must be GJ where we can put GJ and we ought also have to ensure we have to put in the two M's in such a manner that we need to have a G in between them. How, how can we achieve that? We obviously cannot have an M and M here because we have no position to put G and J. So the easy way to look at it is work with the block here. The blocking with the block is 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 useful and better because blocks are very powerful rules. So immediately you can see that GJ can, if you put GJ here, obviously that forces our M to get into the two M's to get into five and six. If you put, if you put GJ here, will that forces M to get in three and four, which is violation of the rules. But the only way to get this done is to have the GJ as a block in four and five, and there has been M here and there has been M here. This is the only possibility based on the condition that is given here. So let's look at what the answer is. A makes a voice to Ma Martinique in week number three. It's the lady gentleman, that is something that is must be true. The rest of the thing is not the answer. We let's look at question number 16 again. Now I hope that you're getting a hang of it. You could pause the video and solve it yourself as well. But let's try. We have another local question, ladies and gentlemen, because this question has got an additional information that is given. If Azad makes a voice to M in a week in week three, which of the following could be an accurate list of Asad destination when week four and five respectively. Okay, let's let's put the game board in. 
one two three four five six seven we have got a working board here we got a t there let's put the information m is in week number three and we have to we have to immediately look at week number four and week number five this is what we are interested in so there are certain rules that we can immediately eliminate for example week number four cannot be j because that is something that we know from the original information we also know that three is an m therefore four cannot be an m that's something that we know so that can be eliminated we also know that if there is a j the one before that has to be a g so that also can be eliminated and the choice in this particular case is a let's look at question number 17 and question number 17 is a global question the reason why is a global question because the information is based on the original piece of information given to us without no additional information which of the following must be true which of the following must be true it will be based on the inference that we actually created and it must be answer choice d Asad makes makes at most two voyages to Jamaica. This is something that we inferred in the beginning itself. So if at all Asad has to make another voyage to Jamaica, there must be a G as a block as well. There is no more J possible because it has filled the uh, filled the seven slots. Therefore, answer choice in this case should be D. That is a process of solving algebraic reasoning set or logical game. The key thing is to be systematic, gather the information, organize them in the right manner, deduce from the information, and solve the questions. If you need a specific course for LSAT India, there's a course available which is LSAT India 480, a course designed to get you 90 plus percentile in LSAT India. There are 90 plus video recorded lesson, 20 hours of live session. All these sessions are taken by me. You can check out the website and also call this number in case you want to know more. Thank you and goodbye.